All right, everybody, let's talk about presets. Uh, my name is Matt Kleskowski over at On One, and uh, I want to do a video for you about Lightroom Develop Module presets because they're really popular. People love them, and I'll uh, basically show you everything there is to know about them from getting them into Lightroom to organizing them, um, different ways to organize them, how to use them, do they stack on top of each other, uh, how to back up your presets, and even how to reduce the opacity um, of a preset, which kind of doesn't really happen inside of Lightroom, but uh, I'll show you a couple of little tricks. All right, so first off, how do you get presets into Lightroom? Well, chances are you're going to go and uh, you're going to go download presets from somewhere. Those presets are going to come in a zip file. You got to unzip the file first. So unzip the file. Don't ever try to import a zip file. Um, into Lightroom because it's not going to work. So unzip the file and what you'll see inside there is a bunch of these little LR template files. These are the presets. So the easiest way to get them into Lightroom is go over to your presets panel. Um, first thing to know is that anything with a Lightroom in front of it, that's an, that comes from Lightroom. That, that's an Adobe kind of factory default. So there are a lot of basics in there um, and you can't even delete them. If I right click, you'll see I can't, I can't delete or anything. These come with Lightroom. These are, these are there. Okay. When you create your own first custom preset that gets put into user presets automatically. Okay. But what we want to do here, let's, let's get a little bit more organized. I'm going to right click anywhere over here and choose new folder. I'm going to call it Matt's presets. So now, now I've got a place to put these presets. It's empty, but if I right click on it and choose import, then I just navigate to the folder that's got my presets in it, the folder that I unzip the presets inside of. Okay. I could click one, click import, and I can do them all separately. That would not be fun. If I just press command or control a, now I selected all of them. Now I just click import and they all get brought into Lightroom just like that. Okay. And the cool thing about it is wherever, wherever this folder just was over here, uh, wherever that folder just was, you don't have to worry about keeping them over there. You can delete them. They, they can be done from there. So, uh, they're all, they're inside a Lightroom now. So you don't have to save whatever, whatever place you put them on your desktop. Um, they just got copied over into Lightroom so you can delete that. Okay. All right. So let's hop back over into Lightroom. Uh, a couple things about, uh, presets inside of here. I did mention you can create your own folders and I would suggest that if you have your favorite black and white presets and make a new folder, call it black and white. Um, if you have vignette presets, make folder for vignettes, sharpening, whatever it happens to be, but make folders for them. Uh, the other thing you can do to organize is let's say, let's say your favorite preset is like this vintage style preset. The problem is, is you'll be, you'll be working on a photo. All right. You're working over here and uh, you'll eventually come, you know, decide I want to apply a preset. So you go to your presets folder, you got to scroll down, you got to find the preset, click on it. If you want to make it a little bit easier, if you right click on a preset and you choose rename, and if you put a one in front of it, then that one will show up at the top of the list. All right. So it's alphabetically, but if you put the, the numbers in front of it, then they're going to show up above that. So that's a quick, easy way to always get to your favorite presets. If you number them, uh, they'll show up at the top of your list here. All right. So, uh, talk a little bit about using presets. So pretty, pretty basic, easy to create. Uh, I think the most common question about creating and using presets is, can I stack them on top of each other? So here's what I mean. Let's say I crank up the exposure. I'm going to just crank it up way too high. Okay. And let's say I add a vignette, strong, strong, really strong vignette on top of this photo. I'm going to go over here to my presets panel, click on the plus icon. And I'm just going to call this, uh, we'll just call this sample one. And what I'll do is I'll check none. And the way presets work is you turn on the things that you want to be part of the preset. So in this example, what did I change? Well, I changed exposure and I changed vignetting. So uh, I'm going to go ahead. And by the way, when you create a preset, you can tell it what folder you want it to go in. So you can make a new folder or you can use one of the existing ones. Um, but I, I included exposure and post crop vignetting because that's what I changed over here. So I'll hit create. Cool. So let's say I go over to this photo and if I change the exposure, I'm going to reduce it on this photo. Let's say I go and I apply sample one. What's going to happen? Well, it's going to crank up the exposure because that was part of the preset. So it's ingrained in the preset. So it's going to crank that up. And it also added the vignette because that was part of the preset. 
Now, let's say, for example, here is let me reset this. And let's say, for example, I reduce the exposure. And let's say I also reduce the saturation. So it almost looks like a black and white. And maybe I crank up the whites. All right. So now when I go up, click and apply the sample preset that I created before, what's going to happen? Well, it boosted the exposure because that was part of it, but it left the whites and it left the saturation alone because that wasn't part of the preset. So the way, the way that presets work, if you want to stack them on top of each other is if the latest preset that you added overrides a setting that's already in another preset, then the latest preset's going to always override everything. If that setting wasn't in another preset, then it will stack. It'll stack just fine. But if it was in one of those other presets, it's always going to override whatever, whatever setting is over here, it will override that. So if there's a setting that's not already changed, then sure, you can stack it. Uh, okay, uh, let's talk two more things, uh, backing up presets and then how to reduce the overall opacity of a preset. So when it comes to backing up, really, really, really simple. Easiest way to do it would be find a preset, any preset, and just right click. Choose show in Finder or show in Explorer if you're using Windows. All right. So what that's going to do is that's going to show you the folder that that preset's in. Okay. But if you look at your folder structure, uh, that's in the user presets folder. Okay. There's Matt's presets. So those are in there. So that's great. I can back up that folder and I can back up that folder, but let's say we go back one more level and go back to develop presets. So what this is, is this is all the develop presets inside of Lightroom. Okay. All of them. And in fact, next to that, below that is all the presets in Lightroom from metadata presets to print presets, everything. But the way it works is you just back these folders up. Okay, so really we're, most people are concerned about develop presets. That's where we spend most of our time. Uh, so what you would do is copy and paste this develop presets folder to a safe place. All right, it's backed up. If something ever happens, you can restore it and put it right back where it should go, uh, right set into your Lightroom folder. If that ever does happen, just restart Lightroom because it just needs to restart to pick up any changes inside of there. But that's a quick, easy way. Again, just right click, choose show and finder show and explore, whatever you're using, and then just back up a couple levels of folders, okay? Not just user presets, not just map presets. We want all of the developed presets that we have inside of Lightroom. So copy and paste that folder to a safe place. It's really small, shouldn't, be, uh, shouldn't take up much space at all, and uh, you can make sure you keep them safe. All right, last thing here. Let's talk a little bit about um, reducing the opacity of a preset, probably one of the most common questions that I get. So I'm going to take a photo here. Let's, let's apply a preset to it. Um, let's go with, let's go with the Sin City kind of, you know, she's wearing red. So we have, uh, I'm going to hit the backslash key. That's before that's after. Um, the question that I get a lot is, can I reduce the overall opacity of a preset? There really is no default way inside of Lightroom to do that. So what you could do um, would be go find every slider that this preset moved and reduce it a little bit. And that would have the effect of kind of reducing the opacity. If you want to take it that step further, um, what you'd need is some type of layering to happen with this. So what I would do is I will hit reset. You can do this in, in one of two ways, but to me, the easiest way to do it is uh, right click and choose create virtual copy. So now I have an original and I have a virtual copy right next to it. I'm going to go ahead and add the preset to the virtual copy. So what I have now is my before and my after. You can see I have them both together. Shift click to select both and you can do one of two different ways. Uh, if you're a Photoshop user, you can go to photo edit in, go down here, open as layers in Photoshop. Uh, the other thing that you can do is you can bring these over into on one and we can go file go down here to plug in extras and open this up into perfect layers. And it'll actually take you into on one's perfect photo suite. It'll bring you into the layers module and it'll set both up as two different photos, two different photos with layers. So all I've got to do is copy the layer from one, go to the original and paste it and then reduce the opacity. OK, 
Okay, so that's how I could fade a preset uh, between the two. Is it's a real easy way to do. It. Not to mention you get a couple of different blending modes here, so you can experiment with that because it'll uh, it'll do the same thing. And Photoshop has those blending modes as well, so it'll work exactly the same. But if you're looking to to reduce the opacity, if you're looking to fade a preset, um, and you don't just want to go find all the sliders, that's really going to be uh, the best way to do it. And uh, if I could, if I'll finish off with anything, it's probably the next common question that I get is um, th there's effects that you just can't do inside a Lightroom. Um, you know, lens flare, um, certain contrast and sharpening effects, uh, certain color tinting and different things like that. So uh, if you're, you're a sweet owner, if you're, if you're watching this, chances are you probably are a sweet owner. Uh, use the effects module. Use the effects module, use perfect effects. That is Lightroom presets on steroids, okay? That is that is the next place to go that if you really wanna get some very cool looks um, and some very neat ways to be able to, to, to look at those looks and kind of apply them to your photos with a lot of different settings, um, this is the place to go. Lightroom's good for some basic presets. You can do a lot of things inside of it, but if you're looking for that next level um, and you are a sweet owner, check out perfect effects because there's a ton of stuff already inside of there. Okay, folks, my name is Mac Laskowski. Hope you learned a little bit about presets. Thanks for watching. Talk to you again soon.